Now most people have a swing that doesn't perform under pressure, it's not as accurate, and it's a heck of a lot of effort without the accuracy and distance that you want because it's more of a hit at the golf ball rather than a swing of the golf club. And the way that the golf swing should work, and I'll go ahead and show you this here in a second, but this U type motion where the butt end of this club is gonna move in a U, and if I do this properly, the club really wants to take off as I turn back up on this U. It's what's called parametric acceleration, or you can imagine as a speedboat with a skier behind it. They're both moving along at let's say 30 miles an hour, and as that speedboat makes that turn, it slings the skier out, and the skier can almost go twice the speed that the speedboat is moving because of that acceleration around the corner and that slingshot type of effect. So what's happening here is on this U, if my club creates some lag, and then I turn that corner, that allows the club head to just slingshot off there and go a heck of a lot faster. It also allows the club to be a lot more accurate when you're doing that. So let me go ahead and just show you how this could work or how easy this looks if you learn how to do it the right way. And then I'll work through an entire body workout to train you how to do this. All right, so let's swing really slow here. I'm just gonna let this club, I'm gonna take advantage of that U-type motion. And as my body turns that club back up, it's gonna look incredibly slow and you're gonna see a decent amount of distance. Now we're gonna start off with little quarter swings here with a seven iron. And we're gonna see how this goes fairly far, even with what looks like a slow motion swing. There we go, nice and solid. 143 yards with a nice tight draw. I felt like that was a chip shot, to be honest with you. I felt like it was very, very slow. Like I'm almost putting no energy into it at all. Now I'm gonna take it back a little farther and I'm just gonna pick it up maybe 10 or 15%. And again, notice how slow and smooth this looks. Look how it's almost no amount of effort. I'm letting the club do a lot of this work for me uh, by using the physics of this. Let me go ahead and try another one here just a little faster. There we go, same thing. Barely swung any harder, I'm up to 163. Not a terrible distance for a seven iron. That is almost no energy. I could probably hit a 500 golf balls in a row and just not get tired using that kind of a technique. I'll add a little bit more force to it here to get closer to a three quarter swing. I started to apply a little bit of power there. Now it goes to 177. Again, a nice tight draw on each one of those. And then if I really want to hammer on it, I can use that same type of pattern, but now put out a little bit more effort. I'm gonna make a little bigger swing. And I'm gonna make sure that this club really takes off like I'm gonna teach you here in a bit using this technique. So let's go ahead and go full swing here, full power. And we can see, even with that one, 192, not incredibly fast jerky. I'm still getting a lot of speed. All those were nice tight draws. All of them would be very close to the target. Pretty daggone happy with that, with a normal seven iron. So, how do we do this? Well, what's going on here, like I talked about the speedboat, is your club the swing is a U and the club should feel like a U. Now, what's happening is the bottom of the U, so if you imagine there's a U shape here, the bottom of that is not when the club is straight up and down. The bottom of the U, the club is still angled back like this. So this club is traveling in the downswing. It hits the bottom of the U here, if you're looking at the, the low point of my butt into the club, and as that club starts to turn back up, that's what slings the club forward. So what most people think about is they think about this U-type shape as a swing. So if I'm doing this with a golf swing, they think about, if I'm looking at the butt end of the club, they, they imagine the lowest point of the butt end of the club being right at the golf ball when it releases, and then the club starts to come up like this. In reality, the low point of the swing, the low point of the, the U or the butt end of the club is here. This club is lagging back. And then as I rotate open, that slings the club off. Again, I can just take it with two fingers here, barely make any kind of a movement at all. And you see I'm swinging this club, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour. It almost wants to flip around uncontrollably because I'm taking advantage of that little motion, that little turning back up. So here's how you train it. All it is is the right side of the U or going up is my weight shift to the right. And then I shift my weight to the left as I'm going down the U. And then I'm going to extend on through as I'm coming through. That's what allows the club to whip on through. Start it with your feet, just going to the right and to the left. And I like to think of your arms, put your palms out like this, and almost think about that swinging 
as my weight's shifting to the left, and then I'm coming on through. So I'm just going right foot, shifting the left, left foot. So just get this basic right left motion down. That's the key to being able to feel like this is in, you know, some kind of uh, synchronized motion. Now let's go up to the knees. You see the key here is the knees are gonna do the same thing. They still make this U type motion. So in the back swing, my legs turn and I'm kind of going up this side of the U. Then I squat to get it a little bit lower. That's when the club would be low. And then from there, I'm gonna, so my knees have some bend here at this point. And as I come back up, my legs are extended. So when I finish my swing, my right leg's pretty extended. My le left leg is dead straight. Practice that about 10 or 15 times. Back swing, so my knees are rotating. They're going this way. Down swing, I squat, knee bend, and then I let my knees extend, or I'm going ahead and extending my pelvis and my body to let that club sling on through there. Same thing with the hips. Little back swing, I'm turning to the right. Down swing, I lower my hips a little bit. Not that much, but it's mostly from the leg bend. My belt buckle's gonna come down maybe an inch. <clears throat> and then from there, I'm turning that corner back up that U, and that allows my club to swing. So we've done weight shift right and left. We've added the knees. We've added the hips. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the shoulders. You see the shoulders are just simply, if you take your arms out to your sides, let those swing. My shoulders and my lower body is gonna feel like it gets closer to the ground. See, if you're standing up out of your posture, what you're doing is you have the bottom of your swing, you have the extension of this club <clears throat> as the bottom of that U. Instead of feeling like you should be, I'll show you here in a second. So if I'm doing it the wrong way, I stand up out of my posture in the downswing. I feel like my body goes away from it and I'm trying to throw that club to reach the bottom of the U. What I should be doing here is letting my chest and my body get closer to the golf ball. I almost feel like if I had uh, my shirt buttons working closer to the golf ball as I start down, then I'm in that position where I would have a bunch of lag. And then from there, I'm gonna turn on through and my shirt buttons are gonna be really high toward the target. So again, my chest, my shirt buttons are doing this, they're getting closer, and then they're rotating all the way around. Everything is this U type shape. It's on a little bit of an angle here for looking from down the line, but it's still this U type shape. So get closer to the ball, then let it sling on through there. You see, if I don't get closer, if I'm too far away, I have to throw the club to the ball. I have to throw the club down here. If I'm closer to the ground, that's what allows me to sling the club through. So I'm getting my, my hands and body lower, and then as I sling it on through there, that's gonna let everything take off. Finally, the hands. Again, if I extend them out from my body, there's my low point, but that's when the club's back here. Then everything slings. See, the, my hands and arms turn back up the U, because my knees are turning back up and extending, my hips, <clears throat> my shoulders, everything's coming back up and in. My arms are just an extension of that. So at the bottom of that U, my hands and arms are here, and then look how they're gonna move up, and that club is gonna sling as it's coming through. So now that you can visualize it like this, let's do 10 or 15 reps. Weight shift right and left. Add the knees, add the hips, add the shoulders, everything's slinging through there, then finally add the arms, and that club is really, really gonna take off. Let's give it one more try here. I'll put a little extra on it. Got a little bit more loosened up after doing those drills. Let's see if I can kick it up even farther. 192 is gonna be hard to beat with a seven iron, but I'll give it a whirl, and I'll try to be pretty smooth as I'm doing it. Uh, maybe not quite, I got 195, a little bit better. So a nice tight draw again. I'm letting this club get down here and it's slinging and taking off rather than me trying to manipulate it and guide it. One surefire way to know if you're doing this right, if you feel like your hands are trying to hit or throw in the downswing, you're not letting the, the club do the work for you. You're not using this U to let it take off. Now, there's one more piece to this. You see, there's one thing that can screw all this up. No matter how hard you're trying to do this U type motion, the fact of the matter is, is your club is swinging on a plane. Your club is swinging on an angle and the club should be pointing down somewhere toward the ball as you start your downswing. Now, unfortunately, most people get this club too steep as they start their downswing and they end up having to stand up out of their posture to shallow that club out. So you see if my club angle is steep, 
I can stand up and it shallows it out. And that makes it impossible for me to get closer to the ball like we talked about here and turn back up later and get some great results letting the club do the work for you. So first, let's make sure that you're not starting down too steep. Let's get the club on the right angle. Now I have a great video that walks you through this first move down and why you don't want to do something that's all too common for players. I'll play a preview of that here in a second. Just go ahead and click the card that you see somewhere up on your screen. If you don't see one of those cards, go down to the link below in the description, click that. You'll get instant access to that video. I can't wait to show you these secrets so you can play a whole heck of a lot better. And once you pair this up with what we did here, just let the club do all the work. Quit feeling like you're banging your head against the wall and let's get the most efficient golf swing that we can. Let's go and get started. Now the bottom line is that by trying to ring that bell or pull the hands down more from the inside, it gets the club shaft steep, steep and runs your entire downswing. Now what you end up having to do is to keep from just keeping down on that steep angle and burying the club behind the golf ball, you have to stand up out of your posture and that's really the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being out driven way too often or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in the steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this, and once you start to get that club on the shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, everything starts to fit in your swing. Now your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't wanna be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move, and that's gonna allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I wanna be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do. 